Today I'm going to talk about a very interesting case. I saw a 62-year-old patient at a small peripheral hospital emergency department uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, this patient had actually presented with three days of lethargy and some vomiting to which he was saying that it might have had some blood in it but he wasn't sure. He was just not making very much sense, appeared a bit confused, denied any diarrhea, denied any bleeding through the rectum or PR bleeding. Uh, but has said to me that he's not been able to tolerate any of the food or fluids and that's why he feels very tired and lethargic. Past medical history, he did not have much in a way of chronic illnesses, no diabetes, hypertension, no history of uh, GI problems or liver disease. He was not on any regular medication, in particular he was not on any anticoagulations, anti-platelet medication or any non-steroidals. He was a non-smoker but used to be a heavy drinker. Uh, but in the last one week and in particular the last three days he's not touched alcohol as per the patient. In terms of examination his blood pressure was fine, 157 by 60. Uh, his heart rate was 80. His Oxygen saturation was 95% on room air and normal blood sugar, normal chest and normal abdominal examination. Uh, we did the prorectal examination which did not show any melina. Um, so I thought, okay, fine, I'll do some blood tests um, including a hemoglobin check, LFTs, lipase, electrolytes, urea. And the nurse called me up that he's actually feeling sick. He vomited um, and when I saw he had about three to 400 mils of vomit which was looking like a coffee ground vomiting to me. Um, he had already had antiemetic uh, by the ambulance. We gave him another dose of antiemetic, gave him um, a loading dose of uh, pentoprazole, plus I started him also on infusion of pentoprazole. His bloods remarkably came back as all normal. He had a hemoglobin of 147, his urea was normal at 5, his creatinine was also normal, his LFTs and lipase were plum normal. So at that point, uh, the priorities were clear to me that this patient has got uh, an upper GI bleed. He has had a history of significant alcohol intake in the past. I called the gastroenterologist at our referral tertiary hospital and um, um, she took the history from me, uh, asked me about the examination findings and then she sort of asked me about what's the hemoglobin uh, and I told her hemoglobin is stable at 147. Um, she asked me about the urea which I told that it was normal. And she asked me whether the patient has got some melina. And I said, no, there's no evidence of melina at this stage. And the gastroenterologist on call, it was about 10 or 11 o'clock at night, declined the admission. She said, well, I don't think the patient has got an upper GI bleeding. That were her precise words. And I don't want to accept this admission. This patient needs to come into a tertiary level hospital and needs to be admitted under acute general medical team for an observation from the hematomesis or uh, Melina point of view. I was somewhat not clear about uh, you know, her priorities. How could she not understand my concerns that this is a patient who's got a long history of heavy alcohol consumption. He's actually come in having episodes of bloody vomiting at home. I have actually seen a coffee ground vomiting myself. Even though he's hemodynamically stable, his hemoglobin is okay, he's got no Melina and his urea is okay, I still have got coffee ground vomiting in front of me, making me concerned that this is an upper GI hemorrhage until proven otherwise. She also wanted me to get a CT of the abdomen done to check whether this coffee ground vomiting could be related to some sort of cancer in the lower esophagus or stomach or duodenum. I listened to her very quietly, very patiently, and I said, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with your management plan. You can either come and review the patient right now, and then if you decide that the patient needs to be admitted under Gen Med team, you can do the referral yourself. It would be not advisable for this patient to come as an undifferentiated upper GI hemorrhage for a general medical admission. I also said that I don't agree that I need to keep the patient in a small emergency for a CT scan of the abdomen because if he was to bleed again and then decompensate then he could potentially die and that could have been purely avoidable. So I'm going to send him urgently to the tertiary hospital and she reluctantly agreed. Uh, the patient went to the tertiary hospital in a stable condition. Four hours after arrival into the tertiary hospital the patient had another large coffee ground vomiting only this time around, he dropped his blood pressure from 130, I think it was 140, directly to about 60 systolic. He was pale, nearly peri-arrest, and had to be 
resuscitated. Um, it was a crash call on the ward. Um, luckily, he was on gastroenterology ward and there were um, gastroenterology doctors around at that time. They actively resuscitated him, saved his life and immediately took him to theatre. During the endoscopy, they found that he had a slow but actively bleeding gastric ulcer along with all the erosive gastritis from presumably all the alcohol intake over the years. And they were able to control the bleeding, stop the bleeding, and you know, this patient's life was saved. Source of bleeding is often debated, uh, especially in emergency department. We know the gastroenterologists and surgeons often debate that if that's you know, lower GI bleeding or upper GI bleeding, the color of the bleeding in itself cannot dictate that. Sometimes the patient may have PR bleeding, which is maroon, could be black, could be bright, this could all be upper GI hemorrhage. You cannot look at just the color of the bleeding of Melina and say that it's an upper GI bleeding or lower GI bleeding. It's very difficult to draw that conclusion. The other thing is, if you are able to recognize classic coffee ground vomiting, this is most likely to be an upper GI hemorrhage. Also, if the patient has got a history of heavy alcohol intake, these patients more are more at risk of uh, gastritis, erosive gastritis, bleeding gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, and esophageal, uh, very seal bleeding. So you've got to be very wary in the patients who have got history of alcohol consumption that they can have significant amount of GI hemorrhage and they can decompensate quite rapidly. Tintinelli actually says that only blood which is useful in the patients who have got an upper GI hemorrhage is cross match. So that you can resuscitate this patient with pure blood. Uh, hemoglobin, LFTs, lipase, and urea for that matter are not diagnostic. And surely and clearly this patient who had significant amount of upper GI hem hemorrhage had complete normal hemoglobin, urea, LFTs, and lipase. So that goes on showing that even with the normal hemodynamic status, normal bloods, the patient could still have a significant amount of GI hemorrhage. If the patient has got an evidence of upper GI hemorrhage in a view of coffee ground vomiting, the only thing which is going to save their life is uh, endoscopy and source controlling the bleeding. thinking that if I would have put the NG tube down and aspirated it, and if that showed coffee ground vomiting or coffee ground aspirate, then that could have established that the, this patient has got an upper GI hemorrhage. But then, mind you, sometimes the NG tube uh, may not have the coffee ground vomiting, so that's not definitive diagnostic procedure either. If you are concerned about the patient that you've assessed in emergency, um, if you're concerned about the history, if you're concerned about the physical examination finding, or if you're concerned about something that has happened, like this patient had a coffee ground vomiting in front of me, then you need to escalate that concern. No amount of normal blood, normal CT scan, normal x-ray can reassure you that this patient will continue to be hemodynamically stable. This patient, as I said, quite rightly was transferred in right time to the definitive facility where he did decompensate but was able to be saved because they were able to offer gastroscopy and source control the bleeding. Imagine if this patient would have bled and decompensated in that small peripheral hospital emergency, I would not have been able to save this patient's life. So something to think about, there are countless discussions that we have every day with teams and sometimes I think that we are not able to transfer our concerns, but we need to highlight those concerns because patients only have us uh, and only us at the time when they need someone to advocate them. So go with your gut feeling, advocate for the patient if you're concerned in your assessment, even if you've got completely normal blood tests and radiology, and that might just help you. Thank you very much and goodbye.